In our first problem, we're going to be dealing with regression analysis. And here it says crickets make chirping noises by sliding their wings over each other. Perhaps you notice that the number of chirps seems to increase with the temperature. The following data lists the temperature in Fahrenheit and the number of chirps per second for a certain type of cricket. So what we're going to do is we're going to enter in the temperatures into list one on our calculator, the chirps per second in list two, and we want to create a linear, quadratic, and exponential model for the data, and then use the best fit model to answer some questions. So take a minute, enter the data into your calculator, and then we will set up a scatter plot for the data because regression analysis always begins with the scatter plot. We go to second and then y equals for our stat plots. Remember the scatter plot is the first type of graph. An X list is going to be L1, the temperatures. Y list is going to be L2, the chirps per second. Go to zoom and then down to option 9 for zoom stat. So there is what our scatter plot looks like. Now we want to create a linear, a quadratic, and an exponential model for the data. So let's set up and find our linear model. So you want to go to stat and then over to Calculate and down to Option 4 for Linear Regression. Make sure your X list and your Y list match the two lists that you used for your data. And you have to remember, while the cursor is next to Store the Equation, you want to press Alpha and then Trace to be able to save the equations. And we're always going to store the linear model into Y1 on our calculator. So your equation for your line of best fit, your A to three decimal places, 0 0.101, that's your slope of your line of best fit. Your B, your Y-intercept, 8.013. And your R, your correlation coefficient, 0 0.543. Remember, your R is always a decimal in between 0 and 1. If R is in between 0 and 0.25, we say that there's no correlation. If R is in between 0.25 and 5, we say there's a weak correlation. If R is in between 0.5 and 0.75, we say there's a moderate correlation. And if R is in between 0.75 and 1, we say there's a strong correlation. So here, 0.543 is a moderate correlation. If I press graph, my calculator will show me the scatter plot and then construct the line of best fit over it. And you see that this line does a decent job representing our data, but clearly not a strong correlation. Now we want to set up and find a quadratic model for the data. So again, we want to go to Stat and then Calculate. Quadratic regression is option 5. You want to make sure, once again, that your X list and Y list match your scatter plot. And we want to store the equation. So while the cursor is next to store regression equation, once again, go to alpha and trace. But now we want to choose Y2. And when you calculate that regression model, your calculator is going to give you your A, B, and C value to match the quadratic equation. So your A, 0 0.022, your B, negative 3.194, your C, 132.495. But your calculator doesn't give you your R value. It gives you your R squared. So what you're going to have to do is take the square root of that R squared value. So 
So what you want to do is go to square root, which is second and then x squared. Go to your VARS button, which is variables. Option 5 for statistics. Over twice to equation. And then down to option 9 for capital R squared. What your calculator will do is put the R squared under the radical. And then when you press enter it'll give you your R value for the quadratic model. And for the quadratic model, the R value, the five rounds the nine up to 10, which rounds the six up to seven. So here you're gonna have 0 0.670. Once again, that's in between 0.5 and 0.75. So that's going to be considered a moderate correlation. But if you compare it to the linear, it's a bigger value, so it's a better fit. And if you press graph, your calculator will construct the parabola of best fit on the scatter plot. Now we want to go and create an exponential model. So one more time, we'll go to stat and then calculate. But now we're going to go down to option zero, which is the exponential, exponential regression model. And remember for the exponential regression model, while the cursor is next to store regression equation, you wanna go alpha and then trace, and then save the exponential model, store that into Y3 of your calculator. So for our exponential model, our A, is nine points and the six rounds the nine up to 10, that nine up to 10, and then the six up to seven, so 7.00. Your B, 1.006. And now your R, your correlation coefficient, 0 0.536. Again, falling in the moderate category. But now we wanna compare all three of the models. And if we do that, the one that best fits the data, the one with the highest R value, is the quadratic. So that's the model that we want to use now to answer some of these questions. If we press graph, you'll see all three models drawn with the scatter plot. The line of best fit, the blue one, the parabola of best fit, and then I froze it midway so you can see this black line going across. That's the exponential model. You see how the linear and the exponential have pretty similar R values. So that's why they're almost on top of each other as far as the graph goes. But we want to use the best fit model, which is the quadratic model, to answer these questions. So it says for letter D, using the best fit model, find the outside temperature. Remember, we had our X list and we had our Y list. Our X list was L1 and those were the temperatures. Your Y list was L2 and those represented the chirps per second. So letter D says, find the outside temperature. Find out what X is if the cricket makes 17 chirps per second. So that means your Y is 17. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what X turns out to be when Y is 17. So one way we can do this is to go to your table. I went to second and window and started my table at 50. So I started my table off when X is 50, so at 50 degrees. And I need to find the value when Y is 17. So... I'm going to be looking in the Y2 column because that's where I stored my quadratic model, and that was the best fit model for the data. So I'm looking for when Y is 17, up to 60 degrees, Y is 19, so I'm going to have to scroll down. And it looks like the closest value for when Y is 17 
here, y is 16.991. So that corresponds to 64 degrees. But the question said, find your answer to the nearest tenth of a degree. Well, this is just 64 degrees. So now what I might have to do is go back to my table setup, second and window, start at 63 degrees, but since the question said to the nearest tenth of a degree, make your triangle table, your, your delta table, go up by 0.1. And then what it'll do is it'll make the temperatures go up by 0.1 of a degree, and then you can look to see what's your answer to the nearest tenth. What's always a better approach when they give you a Y value, in this case, they're giving you the number of chirps per second. When they give you a Y value, is to go about and actually graph the Y value. Type Y equals, type in the Y value that's given to you. So I typed in Y is equal to 17 into Y4. Now I'm using the quadratic model. So the linear equation, which was stored in y1, and the exponential equation, which was stored in y3, I'm just going to get rid of on my screen. I'm just going to graph the y2, the quadratic model, the y value that, the, that you were given in the problem, 17, and find the point of intersection by pressing second, which is the blue button, second, and then trace. I'm going to go to option five for point of intersection. Now you'll see the parabola drawn, and you'll see y is equal to 17 drawn on your calculator. There's my parabola, and this horizontal purple line is y is equal to 17. And now what I'll do is I'll just press enter three times to find the point of intersection. Here it says to the nearest tenth of a degree, x is 83.2. Now that's a little bit confusing because before I thought our answer was like 63 or 64 degrees. And that's because this parabola and this horizontal line have another. I'm going to adjust the viewing window to see that second point of intersection that's not on the screen. I'll press window and I'm going to change my X min to 60 because I thought this other point of intersection was in between 63 and 64. So press window, change the X min to 60 then press graph and what you will see is now a viewing window with both points of intersection go back to calculate which was second and trace go to option five which was intersect last time you pressed enter three times this time what you want to do is press enter two times. Then when the guess prompt pops up, using the arrows, you want to move the cursor to this other point of intersection because your calculator gives you the point of intersection that's closest to wherever the cursor was. Last time, our cursor was about here, so that's why the calculator gave you that 83 degree answer. But now, before you press guess, press the left arrow button, move it closer to the other point of intersection. When the cursor is on this point of intersection, press enter for the third time. So here to the nearest tenth, 63.97, makes that 64 degrees. So using the best fit model, the quadratic, to the nearest tenth of a degree, your answers are 64.0 and 83.2.
Finally, part E, using the best fit model, the quadratic, find the number of chirps per second. Remember, that's Y. Find the Y if the outside temperature, that's X, is 90.1 degrees. And when they give you an X and ask you to find the Y, all you have to do is start your table. Second and window for table setup. Table start at 90.1. And then second graph for your table. So here when the temperature is 90.1, the number of chirps per second, 20.9. Or if it said to the nearest chirp, 21. So that's a regression analysis practice problem. For our next question, the following are data on weekend exercise times for 20 females consistent with summary qualities in a paper. So this is a very scientific problem. And this is how many minutes of exercise these people have gotten over the weekend. It says that you have 20 females, so the number of data should be 20. Take a minute, enter the data into your calculator, run your one bar stat test and find your mean median and standard deviation to the nearest tenth. So here your mean 27.7 to the nearest tenth your median 20.8 to the nearest tenth, and your standard deviation 25.8. Find the percent of the data outside one standard deviation from the mean. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the mean, which is 27.7, and we want to go one standard deviation to the left and one standard deviation to the right. We want to get a range. And then we want to find the percent of the data that's outside of this range. So what we're going to do is this. I'm going to take the mean, 27.7, and I'm going to subtract the standard deviation. I want to subtract 25.8 and then I'll take the mean 27.7 and I'm going to add the standard deviation. So that's going to give me the range of 1.9 to 53.5. I want to find the percent of the data that's outside of this range. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort this data in order. I'll press stat and go to option two for sort. I'm going to sort my list one because that's where I typed in my data. So I'll press second and then one. I'll press enter. And now when I go back to edit, the list will be in numerical order. Now I need to find the percent of the data, the percent of these numbers that are not in between 1.9 and 53.5. I want to find the percent of the data outside of this range. Well, 1.9 is in between 0 and 3. 53.5 is in between 45.5 and 54. So basically, this is the range of the data that's inside of one standard deviation. That means these numbers up top and these numbers below are outside of one standard deviation. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the numbers outside of one standard deviation. Since there were 20 numbers, I know that's seven of the 20. So I'll do seven divided by 20, and that's going to give me 0.35.
So 35% of the data is outside of one standard deviation. Finally, I need to find a 5% and a 10% trimmed mean for the data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first find the 5% trimmed mean. I'm going to go 5% of 20 because I have 20 numbers. So I'll do 0 0.05 times 20, and that's going to give me 1. So what I need to do is I need to drop the 1 highest and 1 lowest data value from the list. So I'm going to drop this 84 and one of the zeros and I'm going to then re-average the 18 numbers that are left over. So I just highlighted the 84 and press delete. I deleted one of the zeros and I'm going to rerun my one var stat test. Since I dropped the one highest and one lowest data value, I'm now down to 18 values. And here, the 5% trimmed mean, the new average, is 26.1. So that's how we calculate a 5% trimmed mean for data. To calculate a 10% trimmed mean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 10% of 20. I'll do on my calculator 0 0.10 times 20 to get 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the 2 highest and 2 lowest data values. But I have to be careful. You always have to use the original data. I already deleted the one highest. I already deleted the 84. I'm going to delete the 82.5. Then I would have dropped the two highest. I already dropped one zero. I'm going to drop another zero. So then I deleted the two lowest. I basically want to be left with 16 numbers. So now I have only two of those zeros remaining. The biggest number I have remaining is 54. I'm going to rerun the one var stat test. And now I should be down to 16 numbers. And here the 10% trimmed mean, 24.2. So that's how we calculate the 5% and the 10% trimmed means.